Hey, it's me again. I can't sleep. It's been a really long day. But, uh, and there's just a few things I wanted to share today that I just want to get off my chest, I guess. Um, one thing I want to tell people is about, it's about a dream that I had, um, probably about two years ago. And before I tell you this dream, I encourage you to test all things. That's that's what it says in the Bible. Because we have to be careful with dreams and whatnot. Well, anyway, here's the dream. I dreamt that I was standing next to Jesus. Or I, I saw Jesus. And he was standing next to this brilliant light. It was white and it was gold. And it burnt like it just a pure fire. Like it was just something really, really, really pure. And I remember when I was looking at this light and looking at Jesus, he was standing in a place that went on forever. There was no end to where he was standing. And what I remember the most about this dream was the feeling that I had in the presence of this light, this perfect light. It was like Jesus was showing me this light. That's what the dream was about. He was showing it to me like he was pointing it out. And it was like this ball of just fire. And it was so pure. And I remember in the dream just this perfect feeling of peace. It was so peaceful. It was like beautiful and I no words can even describe what it was like. Well anyway, when I woke up I asked Jesus, I was like, Jesus, what does this dream mean? I was like, why? Because it, it was weird because it didn't even feel like it was a dream almost. Well, I remember reading the verse that says, For God is a light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And I remember the verse that says that, well, what I felt like Jesus was telling me was that as Christians, each of us has that light within us. It lives in us, and it's our duty to take it and to share it with others. And I think the verse that that reminds me of the most is the verse that says that we're the light of the world. We're the city on the hill, and we're called to be that light to others. Well, I'm writing this right now. Be I'm not writing. I'm, I'm used to writing. <laughs> anyway, I'm doing this YouTube video right now because there's one thing that I do want to address, and... It's denominational hatred. To me, that is just abominable. It's something that I never understood. And it's something that just really hurts. Um, a half my family is Catholic, and the other half is Protestant. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> But anyway, I didn't mean to start crying on you. I've just been doing kind of a lot of that lately. This is harder than I thought. But anyway, um, okay. I have just seen on both sides, not throughout the course of my life, I have seen, you know, I've gone to the different in, in different Protestant churches, I've kind of heard little comments, little snappy comments made toward the Catholics. And that, sorry. That has always bothered me. Just little, little things. Just, you know, whether it be just little nitpicky type, I'm better than you type comments okay and I'm, I'm sure we're all familiar with that um but on the other hand there have also been times when i've been around the catholic crowd and i'm not talking about my in-laws i'm talking about other people um and i've also felt that there's this division like there's this my way is right your way is wrong type of mentality and that's something that's bothered me too. Um, a member of my family 
once said that he went to a retreat and he was told that his religion was the enemy of their religion and that has always bothered him very deeply and it's something that's really bothered me as well and it hurts because you see I see my Catholic friends I have a great Catholic friend who is an example of beauty and purity and she has a spirit that is amazing and you know I see Jesus in my in-laws who are Catholic I see Jesus in my family who are Protestant and it's like one thing that has always bothered me is this feeling that even though it feels like we're family that we're somehow different in, in some ways and that you know that's something that I never really understood um, today you know I was thinking about that and I was thinking about the early early church before churches before these huge structures that we have today were even built um, the first Christian church was a body of believers okay there were no buildings there were no anything you know like what we see today there were people that loved each other that cared for each other and they shared with one another they loved each other so much that they shared and they just that's just how it was and uh it's actually in the book of acts and um one one question that I've, all, I've always had is you know there's so many different people that think okay their way is the right way you know and I've seen it on both sides that their way is the only way and I've seen it literally on different sides all around I'm not talking about just Catholic and Protestant I'm talking about you know I've seen it in the Baptist segment you know I'm sure it's in every religion keep somebody thinking that their way is the only way but do you know what Jesus said about that Jesus said whoever loses his life for his sake will find it and Jesus says that whoever takes up his cross to follow me that's the path to life so you see whoever has the cross whoever has the power of the cross is marching towards something that is just beautiful just something completely amazing and Jesus says in his word that the path is narrow and few people will ever find it and that's not a verse that you're going to hear preached a lot you know that's these days you're going to hear very wide path messages that say oh Jesus wants you to be rich Jesus wants no Jesus said it's hard and I can tell you right now, it is hard. It's hard talking about things that, you know, are going to make people uncomfortable. And it's hard. It really is. And um, I just want people to know that the path to the cross is the most beautiful path. And, and it's like, I once had this vision almost. It was like I was just driving around and it's like this image just flashed before my eyes and it was um it was these people like thousands of people and they were all just like marching up this huge hill and it was very rocky and it was so rough it was a rough climb it was very hard but each person carried this lamp and it was the lamp was this light it was this beautiful light that they carried sorry I know everybody's making fun of me right now but I don't really care you know I read something the other day that um, anyway the place where they were all marching toward up the hill was was to the cross <sighs> well anyway 
Um, I read something the other day, and it was pretty beautiful. It said that uh, the apostles they never would have died. They, you know, they they were martyred because people hated them. But they died not for a lie, but because they believed in something. And I guess what I believe in is the purity of the light of God, how pure He actually is, and how He doesn't discriminate. <laughs> he doesn't discriminate. <laughs> he doesn't say because, you know, because you're Catholic you're going to hell, or He doesn't say because you're Protestant you're going to hell. He says, whoever finds the cross, whoever marches in that direction, Whoever walks on that narrow path, that's the path that leads to life. And I guess that's just the message that I wanted to get across tonight. And you can go ahead and make fun of me all you want. I don't really care. In my life, I've had some pretty hard things happen, so you wouldn't hurt me at all. But anyway, I know I've been making a few people mad with some of my ideas and some of my blog posts, but <laughs> so be it. <laughs> Alright, anyway, y'all have a good night. <laughs> hey, it's me again.